Welcome back to the Rat's Den. Thanks for joining in, guys. It's System Wave. And today we're talking about Mortal Kombat 1. Uh, just a small, short video before I give my input on the review of the game. I've been seeing a lot of issues regarding shader loading. I've been having trouble on my own as well for shader loading. So I wanted to talk about potential fixes for that. And also I wanted to discuss, as you can see on the top right screen, I have the PlayStation controllers set up for PC version. Hopefully the, there's a modder out there that can provide a fix for this in terms of defaulting to just PlayStation graphics. Um, I don't know how to mod, but I would love for that to happen for my other particular controller. So I saw this forum uh, discussion on Steam uh, about the shaders continuously loading because I'm, I'm facing that issue on my AMD card versus my NVIDIA card. And it's kind of a behavior that I noticed across different games. Uh, and when I made this fix, um, it seemed to have solved the issue when it came to reloading the shaders before each potential gaming session. Um, so let's talk about what the types of things are happening and then how to fix them. So for PC users at the very beginning of playing Mortal Kombat, you run into a point where you have to load shaders. With that said, my AMD card was facing an issue where it would continuously reload the shaders every time I booted up. Typically, when that happens, uh, when, when anything involving shaders, there's only a need to load it one time and then maybe one more time upon installing new drivers for your GPU. There hasn't been a new driver update, and I don't foresee them being uh, such a frequent thing in the first place. But I did notice this exact same behavior of reloading shaders when I switched between uh, my two PCs. Uh, one is an AMD card and one is an NVIDIA card. That alone is an isolated experience, and if there are others out there that are facing this, this might apply toward you. This is not an absolute fix for this infinite loop of shader loading, but I'd like to at least say to attempt to try this to see how it does affect you. So uh, right now on my screen, I have Returnal set up. Now, it's not installed on this computer, but I'm using Returnal as an example because... I faced the same issue of reloading shaders every time I switched between my PCs. And I think one of the reasons why is because when you have this option here enabled, this cloud status right here, I think it tends to communicate somewhere internally in the game that it's looking for that specific video card that you last played on. So when I just attempted to do that, I was like, okay, well, let me just turn that off to see what happens. So the way that you do that, and I've got it for Street Fighter set up, is that you go ahead and hit the Manage. Then you go to Properties. Then you go to uh, Steam Cloud right here, right? Then you're just going to want to turn that off. You'll see it here in Mortal Kombat that I have actually done so and turned off the game saves for Steam. And the reason why I, <clears throat> I turned it off for both Returnal and for Mortal Kombat 1 is because when you boot into Mortal Kombat in general, you're already going to log into MK's server. So there's no need to sync your saves between systems in this particular case. Now, I probably wouldn't do that for something that didn't face this issue, like if I didn't have to constantly load shaders all the time. But I think typically more often than not, I think that is the case across all um, experiences. But go ahead and try this option. The Steam Cloud, you know, syncing saves. Turn that off and go ahead and, you know, close and reopen Steam. And you'll be able to at least do an initial shader load. Turn off whatever unit you're using and then going back and playing that particular session again. Now, with that said, the next thing I did want to talk about is uh, PlayStation icons um, within Mortal Kombat itself. A little bit of background is I have a PlayStation 5 controller directly hooked up through Bluetooth on this particular computer. If I go to my settings here and I go to Bluetooth, you can see here that it actually says DualSense right there. And since it does say DualSense connected by Bluetooth, that leads me to have that last bit of connection that I need in order for Steam to say that it is a PlayStation controller. So the last thing that you're going to want to do in order for it to recognize as a PlayStation controller is you're going to want to go back to the cog here, go back to properties, go to controller, and make sure you disable the Steam input. Now, with that said, a lot of people might be trying to attempt to do this. Um, I do have, a, again, an isolated incident where this 
won't work. But in that particular scenario, I'd like to I want to mention that I'm using a instead it is actually a USB dongle specifically for controllers. And that dongle is read as an X input device in general. So it thinks that the USB dongle, without having to connect a Bluetooth controller to it, it thinks that it is an Xbox controller to start off. So in that case, I'm not able to set the controls to view as PlayStation icons. Whereas if you're directly connected through Bluetooth with a DualSense that I know so far, then you'll be able to see the icons in that particular case. So yeah, nothing too exciting about this video, just a little bit of small discussions going over some of the PC areas of Mortal Kombat, how to get your controls set up with PS controls, and potentially how to combat the preloader shading on every round of boot up. And because that can get really tedious, um, it can be quite annoying to have to see that pop up every single time. I plan on doing a little bit of a review for Mortal Kombat, give a couple of input, a couple of gripes, things that I felt like didn't make sense uh, in terms of the roster and the main story. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. We'll definitely see you in the next video.